pain. Let's just cut to it. Max Payne begins with quite possibly the most startling and upsetting opening level in gaming history. After a brief cutscene stylized as a series of comic book panels, we learn that New York City detective Max Payne, the titular hero, is being recruited to the DEA by his friend and colleague, Alex Balder. Max turns his pal down stating that his wife and infant daughter come first, even showing Alex that he's quitting cigarettes, as they're bad for the baby. Max comes home to his idyllic, middle-class suburban neighborhood in the early evening sundown glow, where his life is shattered in a matter of minutes. Upon entry, Max notices a mysterious symbol has been spray-painted onto the wall in his foyer, now aware that his home has been invaded, Max receives a chilling phone call from a mysterious woman who, after confirming that she's speaking to Max Payne, states that she cannot help him before hanging up. Max runs upstairs to a chorus of terrifying screams from his wife and daughter, gunshots, and the manic shouting about abstractions like the flesh of fallen angels. Max Payne released, my buddies and I were predominantly playing games like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Dave Mira Freestyle BMX, WWF No Mercy, Goldeneye, Super Mario 64, you know, lighthearted stuff. There were dark, violent games, sure. I played Loaded on the PS1, and I remember thinking that it was pretty grim and brutal. But as bloody and seedy as games like Loaded were, it was still pretty cartoony and over the top. The first time I tried Max Payne, my buddy Corey and I decided to play it late on a Friday night on the final weekend of Christmas break. Huddled around a small, glowing Toshiba television in a dark room, we were completely immersed in the game. After seeing all of the slick, action-packed commercials, I was expecting a fairly basic but flashy third-person shooter that we could kill a few hours with. No, 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 please God, no. The image of Max's lifeless child under a bloody blanket in an overturned crib had both of us completely silent. I remember it vividly, and despite having the game nearly memorized at this point, that intro level is still disturbing to this day. It's masterful storytelling. and it doesn't relent. The following stage at Roscoe Street Station in the Bronx, set three years after the Payne family murders, sees Max, now deep undercover, inside of the Punchinello crime family, meeting with his old comrade from the introduction, Alex Balder. While looking for Alex, Max happens upon mobsters from the Punchinello family 
as they stage a bank robbery through a portion of the subway station abandoned since the 40s. Death was in the air at Roscoe Street. I'd have to find Alex fast. Not content with the ghastly opening level, the subway station opens with a large trail of blood and the bodies of executed transit police scattered around. The pills would hold the pain back for a while. After icing a few goombas, Not you. Max meets Alex. There are references in the game like framed photos that show Max and Alex having had a successful, daring partnership when both were NYPD detectives, hero cops. You almost gave me a heart attack. I nearly shot you. Alex, I'm glad to see you. Meeting him in Roscoe Street Station feels like a relief, if only temporary. Alex is gunned down by an unknown assailant, leaving Max to be framed as the trigger man. Now the mobsters know that Max is a cop, and the cops think that Max is a murderer. Everyone is out to get pain. There was nothing I could do. He was dead. I could tell by the empty, accusing stare of his eyes. The promotional material had a brilliant design, and the contrast of colors was very eye-catching. If you're old enough to remember, I'm sure you can recall seeing it in many gaming magazines at the time. The iconic black and white character portrait with the bold red title and a stream of police caution tape running across the image adorned with the phrase, a man with nothing to lose, do not cross. The line might sound a little cheesy, but within the first 10 minutes of the game, Max has lost his wife, his baby, and his closest friend, his last remaining strand of emotional stability. And he's framed for the murder. With such bleak exposition, the police tape slogan carries a bit of weight. Max Payne is a classic revenge tale with a thick mix of gritty neo-noir tragedy and the bombastic action of Hong Kong film classics such as John Woo's The Killer and Hard Boiled. In addition to many other film and television references, Max Payne makes direct references to John Woo and Chow Yun-Fat throughout. The password. John Wu. Come on. Okay, John Wu. All right. Come right in. It's a trap! It's a trap! On that note, there was a sequel to the film Hard Boiled via a game released in 2007 called Stranglehold, which, from a gameplay perspective, ironically enough, took many cues from, you guessed it, Max Payne. <laughs> It's actually a really underappreciated game. Hmm. Someday. As mentioned earlier, the story of Max Payne is told through a series of stylized comic book panels with voiceover and sound effects. The team at Remedy Entertainment chose, wisely, to forego pre rendered cutscenes or extended scenes using in engine graphics. Occasionally, the game will use the in-game engine for a brief shot, like the very first one of the game, but the bulk of the tale is the comic book panels. I cannot describe how much I love these. I'm one of those people that took a great liking to the cutscenes of Max Payne 3, oh I'll get to you. But the charm of these comic book panels is never ending. Despite having played this game so many times over the years, I almost always watch these scenes when I do another run. Initially, 
Remedy had the idea of using photographic reference to then recreate the pictures via watercolor for the panels. After realizing that would be largely impractical, the team instead opted to use the still photographs and apply a watercolor filter over them within Photoshop. They're so endearing and winsome. The studio didn't have a gigantic budget and thus couldn't afford to hire professional actors or models just yet. So they put themselves and their friends into the costumes instead. Famously, Sam Lake, the writer of the game, was the model for Max himself. And many a laugh has been had over the years about the infamous constipated face that Max has at times. First, push your chin forward. Now straighten your nose. Narrow your mouth. Lift your cheeks up. Squint your eyes. Arch your eyebrows. And there he is. Paint the Max. The rest of the Lake family had roles as well. Sam's mother is the model for the main antagonist of the game, Nicole Horn, and his dad was the model for the mysterious Alfred Woden. Even his brother modeled for Vinnie Gognitti, the cowardly mobster and right hand man of Jack Lapino. Even a custodian that had been working in Sam Lake's home was asked to be an in game mafioso. This is what I mean when I use the word charming. Despite the grim story beats, the whole game has this really positive vibe about it. It's clear that it was created and nurtured along by a tight group of passionate people. It has that neighborhood band feeling. To see Remedy Entertainment still flourishing all these years after Max Payne released is like watching old videos of Slipknot from 1996 in Iowa and then comparing it to the lavish world tour stage productions that they went on to do. Pink stick, eat it or lose it. Hey, shut your pie hole, buddy. On a technical level, the game's graphics are still pretty decent to this day. Utilizing Remedy's homebrew engine, dubbed Max FX, Max Payne was truly mind-blowing back when the game launched. It was a big deal. Of course, character faces are stiff and butt ugly, as the face scan technology is essentially Stone Age stuff compared to what's available nowadays but many of the textures are still appealing. Explosions and fire from Molotov cocktails still look pretty impressive. Max's jacket has a lovely fluidity to it, like a duster in a Western film, and the particle effects are still great to look at. On that note, the particle effects and environmental interactivity are largely what makes Max Payne so replayable for me. It's the little things that add up. Water dripping from the ceiling of a rundown seedy mobster hotel, bullet fragments scattering across metal, and dust from drywall atomizing during gunfights. Glass shattering, the plumes of water and potassium acetate spouting from the fire extinguishers, and so on. It makes playing through each level feel full and realized. Also mentioned the level interactivity. It may seem pretty rudimentary nowadays when compared to the downright technical thaumaturgy of games like 
Red Dead Redemption 2, and even games like Duke Nukem had done this to an extent prior to Max Payne. But it just brings me joy. It's the definition of simple pleasures. Hitting the vending machines for a can of soda, flushing toilets, running sinks, fiddling with televisions, blasting a speaker in the elevator, much to Max's delight. Thank you. And as a percussionist, my personal favorite is playing a sick beat in the gothic halls of Ragnarok. Karaoke never was my scene. It's all pretty goofy, but again, it helps the levels feel that much more handcrafted and special. It helps to reinforce the sense that Max Payne is an experience shaped by people who were passionate about their art. Well, it didn't go unnoticed, guys. Move that gigantic cotton candy. God damn it! I don't want to die here. We're dead. Max's health is represented by the character outline next to the hourglass. When he's a bullet away from death, he'll limp along, giving the player a clever visual cue that you need to heal up immediately. His health will regenerate just enough to get rid of the limp, but you'll still need extraneous help to restore life. I'll punch you through. Decontamination in Instead of the usual video game health packs, Max polishes off bottles of prescription pain meds to improve his condition. I love how on brand this is for a gritty, hard boiled thriller. And it was clever of Rockstar to incorporate Max's crippling substance addiction into Max Pain 3 instead of treating it flippantly. I also love how the meds don't immediately restore health points, and the effect is instead gradual, keeping the threat of your current gunfight very prevalent and very urgent. It maintains tension. What became all the rage when people discussed Max Payne at the time is also the biggest gameplay feature. You already know what I'm talking about, bullet time. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, Requiem Avenging Angel was the first game to incorporate an ability in which the player could slow down time to avoid oncoming projectiles. But whenever anyone talks about bullet time, even to this day, it always goes back to Max Payne. It was a bit of a landmark, and it's just such a genuinely cool feature. The team at Remedy had been working on this mechanic prior to the release of The Matrix in 1999, as development on Max Payne started in late 1996. But according to Sam Lake, once the team watched The Matrix, they fully embraced the popularity of the film and were happy to piggyback off of its success with the action in their game. The reason why bullet time is critical to the gameplay loop is that Remedy decided, wisely, to have bullets in the game act as true projectiles, instead of the weapons being hit scanners. Hit scanning, for those of you not familiar, is when a character shoots their weapon and instantly hits whatever they're aiming at, instead of an actual projectile being launched from the barrel. It's how the Marines in Half-Life are programmed, and hit scanning would have essentially negated bullet time in Max Payne as a critical gameplay mechanic. Not many things in video games are more satisfying than diving laterally in slow motion and sending 30 copper-coated hornets to their valentine while brass casings spray out of their ejection port and collect at your feet. 
add in some snazzy muzzle flashes. Woo! Right here! God damn. Not to mention the thrill of diving backwards, watching your enemy's bullets sail over you, and sending a few back his way with a sliver of health left. It keeps me coming back year after year. I had just as much fun playing Max Payne to record footage for this review as I did that last weekend of Christmas vacation in 2002, brother. It was an impressive floor show, but I decided to leave early anyway. It was only a one-story fall. Lucky me. The odd thing is, Max Payne was almost an entirely different game at one time. Initially, the title was called Dark Justice and conceived of as a near-future gang warfare game with an overhead perspective. After the success of Tomb Raider, the publisher of Max Payne 3D Realms encouraged Remedy to pursue a behind-the-back third-person camera more suited to intense action gunplay. As you can see by this early footage, Max Payne evolved quite a bit from this rather plodding, stilted movement into the quicker, action-packed gun-fu style of gameplay that influenced an entire generation of action games thereafter. Being able to shoot dodge in slow-mo is awesome, but engaging bullet time right before you pop out of cover and hearing the dull thud of your heartbeat and the muted roar of your firearms as you engage your threats is timeless. Additionally, the camera following a slowed bullet from the barrel of a sniper rifle right before finding its target is still satisfying over 20 years later. I would be remiss not to mention the impeccable sound design of Max Payne. From the iconic theme composed by Karsi Hataka to the dulcet baritone voice of James McCaffrey as Max himself on through to the distinctive boom, pop, and bang of the various weapons. Max Payne is a treat for the ears. I am the wolf! It's close. It's coming. You have come. A witness to the end of time. It's now! In particular, I love the spooky bell tone in Jack Lapino's satanic lair deep in the bowels of the Ragnarok nightclub. It's practically hypnotic, inviting Max in for the ultimate showdown in the belly of the beast. I know that some of the acting in the game can be a little hokey, but it's always entertaining, especially when you catch mafiosos having a chat. Yeah, give me the detonator. What are you talking about? The detonator. I thought you'd bring it. You were supposed to bring it. Yeah, right. Hey. Told you. God damn. I thought it was a bomb for sure. Nah, the Russian wouldn't dare. This has been waiting to happen. <laughs> I thought it was a bomb. Take vampire movies. Why are they always set in L.A. or Mexico? They can't even get a tan. If I was a bloodsucker, I'd move to the North Pole. Went this one long night. Yeah, and what would you eat? Suck blood from penguins? Nah, Eskimos, man. Eskimos. Also... Let's not forget the blood-curdling scream of a V-head junkie when you blast them. The flash. The flash. I noted James McCaffrey's voice acting, but I don't want to gloss over it. The guy is perfect as Max Payne. Just perfect. Some of the poetic language that Max likes to speak in could have been pretty cheesy in the wrong hands, and a lot of it is silly in a very charming way. But James has the perfect mixture of sardonic 
self-aware inflections, smooth deliveries, and genuinely sad or angry expressions. Muerte had received a letter. Our investigation had turned up nothing to link Angelo Punchinello, the head of the Punchinello family, to Val Kier. All tracks had ended with Jack Lupino. I was already so far past the point of no return, I couldn't even remember what it looked like when I had passed it. I'm not trying to get too far ahead, but he absolutely perfects the role by the third game. He's far better suited to the character than this jellyfish. Give me a uh, pie, apple. You fucking income fucking poop. In my memory, Max Payne is a flawless classic. But playing it again for this review, I could definitely see some cracks in the facade. When you're moving and activate bullet time, Max will automatically jump into shoot dodge mode. He has to be standing totally still before you can activate bullet time to freely run around with. Not a big deal, but I definitely leaped into a few walls when I just wanted to slow down time. The cargo loading level is pretty much dog shit and is basically a large round of trial and error while you weed out the sneaky goombas. Okay guys, let's do a super tornado siren. The last level also brought back an oddly suppressed memory. I played this game when I was 14, and in the lobby of the Aesir building, where bad guys snipe at you with M79 grenade launchers, I got so angry that I had a headache. Now, I've mellowed significantly since then, but I have to admit that this section brought back a slight twitch in my eye. There's no way around it. This is a terrible level. Thankfully, I'm playing the PC version where I can quick save but I grew up playing the PS2 version with painfully slow loading times and no quick saves, and that was harsh. Oof. Max Payne, face it. You are up against an unbeatable force. You have already lost. You have lost. Only death will set you free from your pain. Accept it. Surrender. Give up. The rest of the level is just as punishing. You're fighting your way to the head of the snake, and every enemy is basically a terminator. Pinpoint accuracy, high damage resistance, and numbers. I won't spoil it, but at least the ending is kick ass, and I distinctly remember how thrilled I was when I figured it out as a kid. Revenge is a dish, best served with a telecommunications tower. Somewhere, the baby was crying. Lastly, I guess I should bring up Max's nightmares. So, after an encounter with a key character, and later on with another, Max slips into a horrific series of hallucinations that involve running through a maze and along trails of blood in a black room while a baby cries out. Some people absolutely loathe these missions, even resorting to level skips in the console on PC. I really love to watch cartoons. Captain Baseball Bat Boy is my favorite. Obviously, I'm in no position to tell people what they should and shouldn't enjoy, but for what it's worth, I've never had a single problem with these levels. They could be better, of course, and okay, I admit maybe I've gotten pissed once or twice falling off of the blood trail, but I've always found them perfectly creepy and they offer a great insight into Max's unbearable guilt for what happened to his family. Not to mention, it has one of the greatest fourth wall breaks in any piece of media ever. Still, I can see how people would get fed up with these levels, that's fair. Other than what I've said, I can't really fault this game for much, if anything else. 
And believe me, I tried. I went into this playthrough with every critical intention. But in the end, I just ended up having fun. Isn't that the point? Well, I think I've said just about everything that I needed to say. The game was a smashing success, garnering rave reviews and raking in nearly $14 million by the end of 2001, and would eventually go on to sell over 4 million copies. Regardless of statistics and figures, I just love playing through the original Max Payne. A lot of games from this era have aged poorly, and Max Payne definitely isn't perfect, but it's surprisingly intuitive and easy to get back into after all of these years. It can be a little tricky to get running on modern operating systems, but thankfully there are some super smart and kind people out there that have put together helpful guides. If you don't have a PC, you can play the Xbox version, which is a really great console port that apparently runs even better on the Series X, though I haven't tried it. There's also the PS2 version, which can be downloaded on PSN. It is the runt of the litter, but it's the one I played the most back in the day, and it's completely viable. It runs a little rough, but it's playable, and it still hits the mark. Whatever version you can play, if you've never tried it, Max Payne is absolutely worth seeking out. I detailed the opening scene, but I stayed vague about the remainder of the plot, which is surprisingly intricate without becoming complicated and finding out why Max's life was turned upside down is a wild mix of corporate conspiracies and plain bad luck. Running through the cold streets of New York, battling criminals in sleazy hotels, flying through the sky onto a speeding subway train, and splitting wigs inside of cold steel amidst giant smelting chambers, it's all good. Max Payne is a classic. Plain and simple. I hope my friend Corey is doing well these days. Wake up, bitch, you're my new best friend.